اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم today uh, we will go ahead and uh, okay today we will go ahead and uh, talk about uh, adjectives as uh, is the case uh, in english we have nouns we have uh, verbs we have different parts of speech nouns are separate verbs are separate adjectives are separate and we have adverbs prepositions <clears throat> all sorts of parts of speech uh, the same is the case with the with the arabic language but in the arabic language uh, you don't classify adjectives separately you classify them as nouns so we call it sifat okay and uh, so the sifat is what it's an ism sifat like in urdu we have ism sifat it's a farsi construction ism sifat so <clears throat> we call it the sifha ism sifha and uh, the adjectives in uh, arabic or considered uh, ism the nouns so what does an adjective mean let's say for example we have the sentence big house now big here will be an adjective of the house house is the noun an adjective in english comes before uh, the noun it's like we have a wise boy or we have uh, the hot water right wise in this sentence in a wise boy is an adjective and hot uh, in this uh, in the second sentence in the second uh, construction is uh, adjective so you must have observed that the adjective comes before the noun in english language and same is the case with urdu as well but in arabic uh, that's not the case in arabic you first how adjective comes after the noun okay uh, so if you have a big house or the big house so we'll first do the big house so house will come first so it will be al baitu al kabiru right <clears throat> that's how so al kabiru is what is a sifat but and and al gives us uh, the sense that it's definite so the sifat will follow uh, the noun in its uh, definiteness and in gender and in number so if uh, al bait is singular its sifat will also be singular if it is uh, plural it will be plural if it's uh, masculine the sifat will be masculine if it's feminine sifat will be feminine if it's definite it will be definite and it will be plural or it will be plural so all in all cases the sifat follows uh, the noun so what we call this in this case will be mausuf okay so this is mausuf and sifat so sifat always follows the noun in english it's it's the opposite you have the adjective that comes first but in arabic adjective comes after right so how would we use this in the sentence uh, let's say we use we say a small boy a is indefinite <clears throat> so we'll say waladun saghirun saghirun waladun because it's indefinite now if i have to say the small boy then 
I had to put it like this. Al waladu as Now it's definite. Okay. Now in what cases we're going to use it definite? Uh, in the previous session, I told you that the subject of a sentence, which is known as mubtada, will be ma'roof. That means it will be definite. Okay. So this will have an alif lam. So if uh, this construction is comes in uh, in the subject. So we're going to use it in the maru form. If this construction comes in the predicate, in the khabar, then we're going to use this obviously in the nekira form. So how will that be done? Let me just give an example and this will uh, help you understand it. So if I say... <clears throat> If I use the sentence, let me just make a simple sentence here for you to begin with. I'll say the small boy is successful okay the small boy is the subject and anything that follows is the predicate all right so when i say if it was like let's say this does not exist that let's say it was the small boy is successful so how are we going to write that okay we're going to write the small boy is successful as al waladu Najihun. Okay. <clears throat> Najihun means successful in exam. Najihun. Okay. It means the boy is successful. Subject is definite and the predicate is uh, indefinite. Now, <clears throat> when I use the word the small boy, so this there is a this adjective is added now. So now this will be like al waladu as na jihun all right al waladu as because as is the sifat and both make a part of the subject so this entire thing is the subject and this is the khabar this is the predicate and the predicate will be in uh, nakira <clears throat> all right and if it was uh, albintu albintu so because albintu means a little girl, or we can say the girl. I say the little girl. If we have to say the little girl, so it'll be Albintu Asri Ratu. This will also <clears throat> follow the gender of its mausuf. Okay, and same goes on with the khabar, so it'll be Najihatun. All right, <clears throat> because khabar follows mubtada, and uh, in this case, we will have uh, the sifat will follow the gender, will follow the number of its mausuf, and as a whole, this becomes uh, the subject, and uh, its khabar will be feminine, just like we have its khabar as masculine, and uh, the sifat is also masculine. So this is how we will be making these sentences. All right. Now, if I say that <clears throat> this man is big, this man, I say this man is uh, coming. Okay, let's put it like this. Okay, we say, 
we, we use this word first, man is coming. We say a man or the man. We did it yesterday. Man is the subject, the rest of it is the khabar. Okay. So say, ar rajulu. Qadimun. All right. One minute. Say al waladu. Oh, sorry, ar rajulu qadimun. Okay. And uh, if I say a beautiful man is coming, so I say ar rajulu. Al Jamilu Qadimun. All right. So <clears throat> this construction, this will remain in uh, nominative case. But uh, if this goes uh, in a genitive case, if, for example, if the subject goes in the genitive case, it's uh, it's sifat will also go into the genitive case, okay? And if it goes into the accusative case, the sifat will also go into the accusative case. What I mean to see that, say that is the adjective and the sifat will always follow its mausuf, all right? So <clears throat> if I say the two things that we have, three things we have studied so far, one is how a nominative sentence will look like. Its subject will be uh, maruf, it will be definite, and its khabar will be uh, nakira, it will be indefinite. The second thing is that if, uh, and the nominative sentence will, nominal sentence will be in marfu case. This is the case, okay? Marfu, or we can say its case will be a rough, that will be nominative. But in certain conditions, the case can change. It can go to accusative case or it can go into uh, the genitive case. So those two conditions are, uh, they are not default conditions. Under certain conditions, a, a sentence or a clause can go into those cases, okay? So the first scenario we put when there is a haruf jar like fi, it can put, uh, it can put a noun in the genitive case, noun, uh, fi, ala, on, ila, min, okay? These are all haruf ijar, and whenever they come before the noun, they put the noun into the genitive case. Like for example, uh, in the Quran we find, We find min, min al masjid al aqsa, min al masjid al haram. Ila, il al masjid al aqsa. Right? So you can see that this is genitive, this is genitive, this is what, this is the adjective. This is the sifat, and both are in genitive case, and both are maruf, maru, definite, because there is a of a jar coming, so it makes both of these in genitive. And uh, there is another of a jar, ila, masjid, goes in genitive, and aqsa is also in genitive case, okay? So this is, uh, this word is a bit different, okay? So we'll read about this word. It does not take kasra, but this is case is genitive, okay? And the same is the case with the all these is a both genitive sifat masuf because we have uh, it prefixed by huruf ajar that is the preposition okay so two cases we have studied uh, nominative case and what condition will be nominative that's a default case it will be in marfu and when will just like this case this is marfu and in what conditions a noun will go uh, into the genitive case so far we have learned that if there is a huruf ajar, the noun will go into the genitive case. In what case will it be accusative? I'll give you an example. If it's 
if the nominal nominate nominal sentence uh, starts with inna okay so if there is inna inna means indeed or means certainly it is to give the emphasis about what we are saying so if we say inna what inna does it puts the subject of in the accusative case inna rajula so it'll not be in rajuli or in in rajulun or anything like that it puts it in the accusative case the subject of a nominative sentence okay inna is actually a part of uh, this is a family of six so we have inna anna lakinna kanna and then we have uh, la'alla and laita this is the family of six in all of this this is the only one that is does not have a shadda all others have shadda i will read about it uh, about this family but right now what i mean to tell you here is that whenever any of these come before uh, in front of a nom nominal sentence uh, it puts the subject into the accusative case and that subject then becomes ismu inna and qadimun here becomes khabaru inna so <clears throat> that we will study uh, in future the details about this but the thing here is whenever you find inna it will put the subject into the accusative case so here the case of a rajulu sorry a rajul is uh, nasb right that is it is mansub and it is accusative okay so accusative or you can say mansub in arabic or you can say accusative that is the case because that's the change that's done by inna uh, when it comes or the same thing any of these that come uh, you will find that it makes the same change it puts the subject in the accusative case okay i'll give an example from the quran surah adiyat uh, says uh, innal insana li rabbihi lakanud Okay, innal insana, it doesn't say innal insanu, innal insana li rabbihi lakanud, right? A man is grateful, certainly the man is grateful, so it puts emphasis, or you have wal asr, innal insana lafi khusr, right? So whenever you find inna, it will simply put the subject in the accusative case. And further in the same surah, you have in the insan ali rabbihi la kanud wa innahu ala zalika la shahid wa innahu li hubbil khayri la shadid afala ya'lamu iza bu'asara ma afala ya'lamu iza bu'asara ma fil qubur qubur will be genitive because it is preceded by fi so it says, Afala ya'lamu idha bu'athira ma fil qubur. Whatever is in the qabr, qubur is the plural of qabr, right? Be extracted or taken out. Wa husila ma fil sudur. Okay. So this again is genitive. So you can see that you can check these examples in the Quran itself and uh, that will confirm our grammar all right so al-qubur will be genitive and it will be it will not be having kubur in because it has alif lam and uh, alif lam when it is applied on uh, a noun it makes it definite and takes off the tanween and if it's preceded by uh, a harufijar or the preposition it puts it in the genitive case and uh, the same is with this particle inna when inna comes in the beginning of a sentence or when inna comes it puts this it was a subject of the sentence in the accusative case or do you have another example okay let me just put the example like uh, man is man 
is in loss. So you say, <clears throat> Al Insanu Fi means in, right? Khusrin, right? It says the man is in loss. We can put it like that. Al Insanu Fi Khusrin. So when we emphasize, say, Inna. Innal, so it puts it in accusative case. Innal insan fi khusrin. The ayat is la fi khusrin. La gives you further emphasis, which we will go ahead and study later on. But this puts this in genitive case. You can see that khusrin is genitive. It's not khusrun. And this is an accusative case, okay? So this is the emphasis on the sentence. Innal insan fi khusr. Now, how do we put, we don't say, Certainly, uh, when we making a norm, no, normal conversation, uh, if we have to emphasize something, what we simply do is we just raise the voice. Okay, if I say, I was in the house, I say, I was in the house. Now, if I have to emphasize certain thing, but in Arabic, you have these particles which can be used uh, to add emphasis. You don't have to raise the voice, you can simply add it and automatically put an emphasis in what you're trying to say. So, these are uh, the two. We took an example of uh, the nominative case. That is the default case, and uh, marfu, that one is the marfu. And uh, we took an example of the accusative case. When does a subject or an SM go uh, into an accusative case? That is in the mansub case. So far, we put when we have in. This is the only thing we have studied so far. And when does it go into the genitive case? When does the ism go into the genitive case? And that is uh, majroor. That is when we have huruf ijar like fi or ila or ala. Ala. Okay, so these are the things that we have studied so far. Try to grasp them. And another thing that we have studied so far is the adjective. Okay, so an adjective will uh, be ism. It's an ism, the sifat, and it will uh, it will uh, the first noun will come, and then its sifat will come. If I have say to if I have to say cold water. I'll say al ma'u al baridu. If I have to, say, this is the cold water. If I have to say a cold water, ma'un baridun, right? And normally, this is if we put this into the, uh, if it comes in subject, it comes as this. If it comes into the predicate, it comes as this. All right. If I say ma'u baridun, what does that mean? If I say al ma'u baridun, this means the water is cold. This is a nominal sentence. This is not a sifat right now, okay? This becomes a nominal sentence. And later on, you'll come to know how uh, this can get converted in the sifat as well. But right now, this is a, a nominal sentence, okay? This means the water is cold. If I have to say the cold water, the cold water is here or the cold water, then the khabar is coming up after that. So say al ma'u, al baridu. Now, this is an incomplete sentence and the khabar is following. Know what I'm saying? So try to go ahead and uh, do exercises around it, okay? And try to grasp it. And if you have any confusions or anything, feel free to go ahead and uh, drop your questions. So with that, we conclude our today's session. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Wa nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Wa nastagfiruka wa natubi ilayk.